Hey YouTube, Ed here with Jack of All Trades and welcome to another video. So we're back in the garage with the Volkswagen here. Uh, I bought this car for my daughter. It's got 100,000 miles on it and I knew there was going to be some things that I had to fix on it right off the get-go. But uh, it's actually developed a new issue since we since we picked it up. And I, so what I had what I'd done is I'd taken it to the dealer and I'd had them do an oil change and a transmission fluid change and all that kind of stuff and give it a once over and look over. And during that oil change process, we found out that there's an oil leak on this thing. So, and it's just a seep. It's a very gradual leak, but it's still a leak and it needs to get taken care of. It's not even making a drip in the driveway. But what the dealer told me is that it is the, the vacuum pump that's leaking and they want $1,500 to repair this thing. So to talk about why they want so much money uh, the pump itself the dealer just generally replaces the pump they don't do a repair on the pump and then there's nine hours of labor associated with it because as per the book the Volkswagen book you're supposed to separate the engine from the transmission to replace the pump and the dealer will only replace the pump they won't repair it and they will do the repair by the book which is to remove the transmission from the engine what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to reseal the pump. I'm not going to replace it. You can buy a reseal kit off of Amazon. It'll cost you $35. Then I'm going to show you how to take the pump off without actually removing the transmission from the engine. Now, I've never done this. This is the first time for me. So you are actually going to be watching the video of me doing this myself for the first time. And I'm going to tell, we're going to figure out how long it's actually going to take you to do it. You have to understand that I am mechanically inclined. I went to school to be an aircraft mechanic. I've worked as an auto mechanic for most of my life. It's in some kind of a capacity. So I have a mechanical aptitude. So you have to take this into account for you to decide whether or not you want to take on this repair or not. At any rate, let's, uh, let's get the camera turned around. I'm going to show you the tools that I've got out and what I'm going to use and then I'll relocate the camera into the engine and I'm going to show you step by step on what I did to make this repair happen. So first things first, uh, you need to know that this is a 2009 Volkswagen Beetle and it's got the 2.5 liter engine. It is not the diesel and it is not the turbocharged model. Okay, these are the tools that I have assembled for the job and if I need more as the, as the job goes on, I will annotate that during the video and I will also supply a complete tool list at the uh, in the description uh, from top to bottom I got some paper towels and brake cleaner because we are dealing with an oil leak here of course the gasket set itself I've got my screw gun in case I can use it anytime I can use a power tool I will I have some some items here to pry off covers and various things some pry bars I've got some uh, socket adapters for my screw gun some extensions both 3 8 drive and quarter inch drive uh, metric 3 8 drive inch deep well sockets quarter inch drive deep well metric sockets uh, quarter inch drive shallow well met, uh, metric sockets a set of torx bits a 3 8 and a quarter inch drive ratchet and some pliers so that's the tools that I'm going to use and like I said if I need more as the job goes on I will make sure I uh, annotate that during the video and there will be a tool list in the description okay let's get right into it so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this this engine cover there's no real mystery behind this on this car it is just pushed into place so I'm just going to give it a good stiff pull and the engine cover comes right off now, from what I understand, the next thing we have to do is we have to take this uh, we have to take this air tube off. Now, there's some sensors here that we have to make sure we take off, so we got to make sure we remember where those go. And we've got some air hoses or air tubes here. Uh, we need to be very gentle with these so we don't wreck them. And as you can see, when you're doing this job, you can see there's some serrations right here. Those are places for you to grab and squeeze, like you know, it's like a like a bottle of mouthwash where you have to squeeze the cover to, to pull these uh, hoses off. So you just give them a squeeze and give them a little wiggle and they'll come off. Don't force these. They will come off fairly easy. But we've got two of these on here that need to come off and they're kind of hard to get to. Especially when you're trying to work around a camera. Give them a squeeze and pop them off. So there I've got them both off. So we also have to take this sensor off here 
And there is, so my sensor has apparently been off once already because it's, the keeper on here is broken off, but it, this one just pulls off. I imagine that there's a, there's some kind of a push button here that you would normally have to push to get that off. But as I said, apparently mine is broken. We'll set that off to the back here. So the next thing we got to take off is the snorkel here. So I got to take this spring clamp off. I do not have a spring clamp pliers. So I'm just using your garden variety uh, garage pliers to remove those spring clamps out of the way. And that snorkel should just work right off. Takes a little bit of force and pressure but it does come off and there's the snorkel it is off okay just to get it out of the way I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna remove this line as well like I said be very gentle with these vacuum lines you don't want to break them they are just plastic and I'm reasonably sure Volkswagen would probably charge you an arm and a leg for replacements Oh, and this one is held on with a zip tie, so we're going to have to cut that zip tie off. So adding a tool to the tool list, a pair of side cutters. And the air tube is out of the way. So the next thing that's got to come out is both the air box and the battery. So uh, the battery box on this one is quite tricky because this thing is kind of stuck back in here and there's some... They got some extra stuff on top of here. I think what I'll take off first is the air box. But it looks like just a 10 millimeter wrench to take this bolt out of here. And the entire air box assembly comes out. So the next thing we have to do is get this battery out. So on top of this battery is this, this box. And in this box is some various uh, connectors. Uh, it's just a distribution box is all it is. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, with a 10 millimeter wrench, I'm gonna remo remove this connector right here. Then this box just literally pushes out of some slots and gets backed up out of the way. All right, so now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the negative battery terminal. Now, Volkswagen, in true Volkswagen form, couldn't possibly use a normal kind of battery terminal. So the, the negative and the positive are the same. So just know that I just removed the negative. So the way this battery terminal on these doggone Volkswagens work is there's a nut here that sucks down and when you suck it down it drives this wedge up and it squeezes these battery terminals together it's kind of a crap design if you ask me but nobody asked me okay now it looks like the battery cover comes off half of it does right there and it looks like the battery just slides out of the way Boy, there isn't enough room for air in this engine compartment. So there's the battery. Battery is out. So now you can start to see the beginnings of where our vacuum pump is, and it's right down there. So before I get too, too much deeper, this whole battery tray has got to come out. There are two 10 millimeter bolts, one here and one here. Those have got to come out. This whole battery tray's got to come out and it just pulls out and it's a bastard to get out. You literally just have to pull it off. And then there are two blind bolts, which you can't see unless I move the camera. Two blind bolts right there. Those both have to come out to get the battery tray out. And to get to those two bolts, you have to loosen this snorkel up and get it pushed out of the way. Don't take it out because there's a hose on the back side that it's connected to. But you just have to move it and push it out of the way so you can get to these two bolts here. And the battery box is now removed. All right, so the next part we got to take off is we got to take off this, this linkage here for your shifter. So I just got a big 
flat tip screwdriver very gently just give it a little pry should pop right off there it did okay so now we got to take these two bolts out here holding the shift cable in place and this is a 12 millimeter socket they're on there pretty tight I guess that's a good thing to have pretty snugged up don't want that coming off just push that out of the way okay so the next thing we have to take out is this plug right here and this should just pry out a little light pressure yeah she pops right off there get that out of the way good deal so the next thing I'm going to take off is I'm going to take off this bracket here for the linkage uh, looks like these are just 10 millimeter bolts they are zip those out Try really hard not to drop these things. All right, now right, right here you can see there's a nut that's got to come off. And that's actually your shifter. And you know what? If it moves when you're, when you're working it, no big deal. We can make that. We can work with that. But that's got to come off as well. Okay, so then this, once you got that nut off, the linkage that that nut is holding in place should slide right off and now we've got another nut right there <coughs> and it looks like it's got some capture tabs on it so we got to get a screwdriver we got to bend those capture tabs out of the way and since there's capture tabs on it it might not be horrible tight I'm just gonna use a channel lock see if I can break that nut loose Yes, that nut's not very tight, so a channel lock is more than enough to get that thing loose. And then you can just spin it off with your fingers. Take that washer off with the capture tabs on it. And then I'm just using a door removal pry tool here to pry this off. And that comes off as well. All right, so now we've got everything out of the way, and what we need to remove is right here. And of course, this hose is in the way again, but you can see that's the vacuum pump right there that we need to remove. <coughs> okay, so you can see there's a lot of oil residue and stuff uh, down here on top of the transmission. And I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm going to clean that up right now. And you, yes, this is where the oil leak is coming from, is this vacuum pump. So I'm just going to go ahead and spray this down with some brake cleaner. Kind of give it a little, little bit of a clean up here. I like to use brake cleaner because it cleans really well and it dries really fast. Uh, be advised, this stuff stinks, so do it in a fairly well ventilated area. So just try and clean this up as best as I possibly can now. Once you get it cleaned up in here and get the gaskets and the pump changed, uh, that'll allow you to monitor to make sure that the oil leak has been arrested. Okay, now it's time for the pump removal itself. So the first thing we got to take off is we got to take the cover off this pump. So we need a T25 Torx bit. And there's four screws here. We got to take all four of these screws off. Now when you're taking these off, you want to be very cognizant of how far you've got these screws out because you don't want to drop them you want to be able to keep these things captive i'm telling you there's so little room in here you drop one of these screws you're in a world of hurt all right all four of the screws are out let's see if this cover comes off and it pops right off and there's the seal that one of the seals that we're going to replace so we're going to set this aside. All right, now once you pop that cover off, you're immediately starting to drip oil under here. So one of the steps that I kind of forgot, and you might want to take into consideration when you do it, is to have some paper towels ready that you can set underneath that pump to kind of arrest any, or at least capture any of the oil leakage. Because it's going to leak oil. It's just, there's no way around it. You want to keep the mess down to a minimum. 
All right, so now the next thing that's got to come off is this uh, this brake hose or this hose, this vacuum hose going to the brake booster has got to come off. And it just pulls off. You just got to be gentle with it. Give it a little wiggle. It's just plastic, so don't overdo it. You should be able to just pull it straight off, and it comes off just like that. So like I said, be very careful with it. It is just plastic. Okay, so right here is a bracket that holds an electrical harness. That bracket for that electrical harness has got to slide out of the way. All right, so this first bolt that's got to come out right here, that's a 10 millimeter bolt. That's got to come out. And then we got to come up with the T27 and remove this Torx bolt. There's one right there that you, you, can, you can't hardly ever even see, but it's there. I'm on it now. Okay, it's loose. Like I said, this is the first time I'm doing this. I'm doing this with you guys for the first time. And then there should be one more right there and yep it's right there right where my where my social finger is now the pump comes right off and there it is you can see it right there it's loose now here's the neat part it's got to get this is why it's a nine hour job at the dealer because of this transmission shaft right here it's got to get around that so all you have to do is take your pump kind of wiggle it and work it around that transmission shaft and out it comes there it is that's your pump now there's a gasket there and it didn't come off with the pump so I'm taking it off by hand and you want to make sure when you take it off that the gaskets complete if there's any part of that gasket missing it's still on the engine all right so now we've got that pump out and it is it is out of there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a clean paper towel. I'm going to shove it in the hole for the pump so I don't get any debris in there. And then I'm going to take some brake cleaner and I'm going to clean up as best I can with brake cleaner because I want to get all of that residue out of there so that I can, once the repair is done, I can monitor this thing and make sure that the leak has been arrested. As you can see all that oil, or you probably can't, but if you're having the problem, you will see a whole bunch of oil and junk and garbage sitting right on top of that transmission. And that all should get cleaned out of there while you've got this apart. So there's something to be said about taking the transmission away from the engine because you have the ability to clean it up better but it also takes many, many hours and a lot of knowledge to do. This, so far, this I would scale, I would, on a one to 10, I would say this repair is about a five or a six. And anybody who has got a little bit of mechanical aptitude should be able to do this repair. If just set yourself a, a good amount of time to do it. Okay, here's our pump. And you can see we have the two gaskets here. And um, these are what, these are generally what's leaking. So we're gonna throw those to the side because we're not gonna reuse those. Now, first thing if I can impress upon you on anything, anytime you're gonna do something that requires putting in new gaskets, your mating parts have gotta be impeccably clean. And I do mean impeccably clean. It doesn't take much to cause an oil leak. So these things have gotta be seriously clean. So the first thing I do, here's your cover. As I rub my finger over the surface, you can see a line there where the gasket used to be. And if you can feel anything, there's an imperfection in that cover, and I would replace it. I would just replace the whole pump if you have any kind of imper imperfections in this cover at all. And now understand that this is not a sanctioned repair by Volkswagen. Volkswagen always recommends that you just change out the whole pump. 
I'm just trying to save myself some money here. So my, my cover feels good. I don't feel any imperfections other than a couple of raised up spots where there's some leftover residue and gasket material. So I'm just going to clean this. And I am not going to use Scotch-Brite. I'm just going to use brake cleaner. And I'm going to bring you into a new tool, a clean ice cream pail. So you set your cover in there. You grab you some brake cleaner, hose it down, do this in a well-ventilated area, and clean this off as best as you possibly can. Get all the imperfections and all the residue and all the crap out of here that you can possibly get cleaned off. And you're gonna, you might want to use some rubber gloves here because this brake cleaner is kind of hard on the skin. But just get everything off of here. And if you feel so much as a bump, get rid of it. Buy a new pump. But this cover actually looks pretty good. I'm going to reuse it. So now we're going to clean the pump itself. And again, I want to make sure that there's no residue or debris in the pump. And I want to clean the exterior of the pump as well. So I'm going to pull this out again. Set it here in an orientation I can remember. Set my pump in here upside down. And I'm going to spray it down with brake cleaner. Clean it up as best as I possibly can. So the other thing I want you to do when you're doing this is you see here a groove. That's where the new gasket's going to sit. You want to make sure that that groove is also perfectly clean. There is no junk or crap or residue in that groove whatsoever. So you want to make sure that that is absolutely 100% perfectly clean. So I'm going to add another tool to the tool list, and that would be a brass brush, a nice a brass cleaning brush. You can actually buy these brushes in multi-packs at Harbor Freight, and they really do a nice job of just helping you to loosen grime and gunk in these corners and edges where things like to build up and are hard to reach. All right, so now my pump and my parts are all clean, and here's the new gasket set. This is what you get. You get the, the seal gasket for the cover here. You get the gasket that, it's a metal gasket that fits behind the pump, and then you also get this little O-ring gasket here, and this is, your, this is your vacuum port gasket. And as long as you got this thing out, we might as well change that. So here's, this is your vacuum port right here. Make sure that's in frame, it is. So what you got to do is, and this is really kind of tricky to get apart, get yourself a flat tip screwdriver and there's a little tab here and you just push that little tab down and kind of work it out and you can feel that it'll, it'll push its way out but not quite all the way. And then you got to flip it over because that same tab is on this side. Take your index finger and push up on the bottom and then go ahead and push this tab the same way And it's, like I said, it's really a pain in the butt to get out of there, but it will come out. You might have to go back and forth a couple of times. There, it popped. So once you get it to do that, you can pull this out, and there's that gasket. That's the one that you want to replace. So now that I've got the vacuum port out to get the old gasket off, all you have to do is pinch it here and give it a little squeeze up and you can see the gasket will lift and then you can just roll it right out of there. Take your new gasket or your new O-ring, slide it right back over and into the groove. And there it is. And then I like to just take a little, a little finger drop of oil and put a little oil on there just to kind of lubricate it to bring it back in to allow it to slide back into shape. And then just push it back in and there you go. That one's been replaced. So now we can go ahead and put this pump back in. Okay, so now basically we put everything back together just in reverse order. I'm going to remove the rag gently, make sure I get all the rag with it. I didn't leave any in the engine. <clears throat> now we got to put the pump back in, and this is going to 
This is going to take a little little tweaking and cursing and some just finagling to get in, but you can get it in. So lift this hose out of the way and push put this pump over that shaft like we did to get it out. Kind of rotate it back into place. Now you can see, I forgot to show you, I've got the gasket into place here. So you got to have that gasket on there first. Don't forget that. And rotate it back into the hole. And you kind of got to feel it in there. You got to feel your way to get it in there. Keeping the gasket lined up. Don't force anything. This will all, it'll all go together really nice and smoothly. So now I've got it basically in there. Now I got to turn this. I got to turn this so it'll line back up in the engine again. There it fell. And now it's in place. So now we just have to make sure the gasket's lined up. And it is. And we just got to get the bolt started. So the first bolt I'm going to start is the one up high on the, on the back part here, on the rear of the engine. I'm just going to find the hole. And I'm just going to start it by hand. OK, it feels like it started. <coughs> so I'm going to use my extension as a screwdriver. Sorry if I'm breathing a little hard here. It's hotter than the hubs of Hades in my garage today. Okay, it's back in there. So I'm just, just got it started. I don't even have it snug. Just start it up. All right, so we got, we got the bolt in there. Now we're going to put in this bolt up here at the top, right here. And we're going to do that because we've got to get this bracket in there as well. So again, we've got to push the wire harness out of the way. So we just got to get this bracket put back into place. This is going to be a pain in the butt. All right, so I got the bracket generally in place, and then I'm going to start this top bolt here. And it started good deal. Okay, now I got to get that bottom bolt in there. And this is going to be, this one's going to be really tricky because you can only feel it. You can't see it. You got to do this one totally by feel. And I believe I got it in there. I did, and it started. That is fantastic. All right. Well, I got all three of the bolts started, which is a miracle. Now I'm going to snug them up. Now, I don't know what the torque setting on this is supposed to be. I do not have a torque wrench. I suppose I should probably get one. So I'm just going to use the Polish eyeball torque wrench. And it's a click style. It's not horribly accurate, but it always works. Click. Did you hear it? Click. Click. There we go. All right. So it's officially torqued. Now we've got this this 10 millimeter bolt that holds this pipe onto this bracket here. We got to put that on. That one's nice. All right, now 
We've got the cover and the new gasket. So the first thing we have to do is we have to put the new gasket on, on the pump itself. And this is going to be a little tricky because you can see that the pump is not perfectly round. So you just kind of got to set it in there. And I put it in dry. Try not to twist it. And just work it around the groove. Again, trying not to twist it because it is a flat, it is a flat seal. So if you if you twist it, that's going to create an oil leak. I guess I could have probably done this when the pump was still out, but I didn't want to run the risk of damaging it while I was installing it. Tell me what you guys think in the comments about that. I think I'd rather do it here. Okay. All right, I've got I've got the seal in. Get my light. Just take a look at it. Nothing's twisted. <coughs> it's all in the grooves. Looks good. All right, so I've got the seal installed. Now I got to put this impeller back into place, making sure that there's no dirt or grime on it. Back in place. Now time for the cover. All right, so get the cover oriented correctly, like so. What I like to do when, I've got, when I'm dealing with a seal like this is I get the cover put in its general location and then I hold it there by hand and try and get a couple of the bolts started without moving the cover as much as possible because you don't want to do anything to disturb that seal any more than you have to. <coughs> okay, so now I got all the bolts started. Now I'm going to use my nut driver with a T25 and I'm going to uh, tighten them up by hand. So I'm just going to snug them up gentle. I'm not going to get crazy with torquing them just yet. And I'm doing the bottom. All right, now I'm going to go through and I'm going to tighten them all by now I'm going to grab my ratchet wrench, and they're not, I'm not aware of a torque spec on these. If there is one, uh, let me know, but I haven't been able to find it. So I'm just going to go through each one, torquing them opposite corners again, and I'm just going to give them a little snug up. Click. 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 Don't know what the torque setting is, but it's clicking. Click. There we go. So that's all done. Now we just have to put all the parts back on in the reverse order. Do not forget to hook up your brake booster hose. That's the reason we're doing this whole exercise. And there it is. Okay. Got to put the wire harness back on this bracket. There it is. Okay. I'll put this sensor back on. Like so, there we go. Go ahead and put these two bolts back in. Okay, one very important step that I forgot to do here and I'm probably gonna end up paying for it, but it's got, I gotta mention it anyway to do, be fair to you guys. 
these bolts here that hold the sensor on, you should mark those when you take them off because they're slotted and there's an adjustment for those. I made a mistake and I should have marked those, so I'm gonna hope and pray that I got this thing into the right spot. It did leave marks in the metal where it had been sitting for years and years and years because I don't think it had ever been removed. So I'm hoping I got it in the right spot, but just to be fair to you guys, you do need to mark this sensor before you take it off. So now we gotta plug this sensor back in here. Like that. <clears throat> Gonna put the locking tab washer back on here. And the nut. Now you don't have to get crazy with the torque on this nut. I would just get it finger tight. and then bend the locking tabs back up. All right, now we got to shifter bracket back on. Okay, that's back on, lock washer, and the nut. There we go. Now we gotta put the shifter cable bracket back on. All right, now we gotta put the put the cable back on so it should just be a matter of a good sharp push down and it was it popped right into place okay well the repair is basically done we just now have to put the battery box the air box and everything back into place where it came from All right, so when you're putting these all these tubes and fittings back together, they've all got a little O-ring right there, or on one end there's a little O-ring, and they can be a bear to stick back in there. A little shot of WD-40 on that O-ring will do you wonders. Not too much, just a little, just a little squirt. And then when you put them back on, you should hear an audible click, like that one. That one clicked into place. I've already WD-40 this one, you should hear a click. And that one clicked into place.
sucks getting old. All right, here's a list of everything that I used to do this repair. I used quarter inch drive ratchet wrenches, a three eighths inch drive ratchet wrench. I've got a 10 millimeter quarter inch drive socket. I've got a 13 millimeter quarter inch drive socket, a 10 millimeter three eighths drive, a 12 millimeter three eighths drive, a 13 millimeter three eighths drive, a T25 and a T27 Torx, a 3 8 inch drive extension, six inches long. I used two six inch long quarter inch drive extensions. Uh, I had to use two of them to get the battery to hold down back into place. A LED handheld flashlight, a quarter inch drive universal joint, a nut driver handle, a 3 8 drive socket adapter for my screw gun, and of course the screw gun itself, a brass brush for cleaning, I used a small flat tip screwdriver, a long Phillips head screwdriver, a long flat tip screwdriver, your standard garden variety pliers, side cutter, needle nose, channel lock, and a plastic pride door removal tool. I also used some brake cleaner and every man's savior a can of WD-40. All right, so I gotta try and make this quick. I've only got nine or 9% 9 battery left. So the repair is done. Sorry, it's hot as hell in here and I'm sweating like a pig. But all told, it took me about to include dinking around with the video and the camera and all that stuff, about three and a half hours to get this repair done. Uh, if I didn't have to do all of the video and stuff like that, I bet you I could have knocked it out in about two hours and got it all finished. Uh, at any rate, this is point being, this is a repair you can do yourself instead of giving the dealership $1,500. Now, the repair is not 100% complete because now I got to back it out. I got to run the vehicle and I got to look to make sure that there's no oil dripping anywhere. So the final step in this process is to verify that the oil is no longer leaking, that I don't have any residual leaks, and then to continue to monitor for several days just to verify I don't end up with an oil leak. So uh, my daughter's actually out of town. I'm going to drive this car around a little bit just to make sure that it works for the next couple of days and make sure it doesn't develop an oil leak. At any rate, uh, if you like this video and you like this content, please hit that like and subscribe button. Ding that notification bell so you don't miss up on any upcoming videos. I appreciate all of my subscribers. Give me some comments. I try to try to answer all the comments I can. If you got any questions, I'll certainly do my best to answer them. This is Ed with Jack of All Trades. Thanks for riding along, and we will see you on the next video.